Hi everyone, I'm Kirsten Holtz, Sanctuary Director of Lorimer Sanctuary. And now that we're spending a lot more time at home, people are asking me, how do I get started? I want to go, go outside, but I don't know what to do first. So this video is going to be just a little introduction on how to get comfortable exploring the outdoors. And maybe I'll show you a few things along the way. So the first thing that I always tell people is the number one most important thing for exploring outdoors or for survival is PMA. PMA stands for Positive Mental Attitude. So to ensure that you have PMA, make sure you pack all of your essentials. Now all of these things aren't going to be necessary for you, but it's what I like to bring along when I go outside. So the first thing you can see is a pair of binoculars. Um, if you don't have binoculars, who cares? Just go out anyways. Um, the other thing that I always bring is some water. Uh, if you're not going out for a long time, you don't need that much, but just having a little bit, again, puts you in a better mental space. I also always like to bring some snacks. And while I'm out there, um, there might be something that I like to, I'd like to identify. I don't recommend always bringing a field guide because sometimes it's just nice to be outside. But right now, a lot of wildflowers are starting to pop up, so I'll bring my Newcomb's Wildflower Guide. Again, you don't need it, but I like to have it right now. And then bring a journal, something to write down what you saw outside, because then if you do this again next year or even next week, you can watch the changes that happen throughout the season. So now that we have all of our essentials, we can actually get moving. So the first thing I like to do when I get to a location and I'm just exploring for the day is open my field of view. So all day long, a lot of us are looking at our cell phones, computer screens, books, things that are really close to our faces. And when we go outside, that's our opportunity to really open our field of view and take everything in. So there's a little trick to this, and if you want to open your field of view, uh, just follow along, do this with me. So a little background, when we're outside, a lot of times if we're looking for something, we're scanning trees, right? We're looking for birds, we're scanning for trees, we're scanning for squirrels nests, anything we can find. But to take everything in takes a little bit of a different type of vision. So you're gonna hold your fingers out in front of your face like this, and actually I suggest taking hats off because then your field of vision is a little wide, wider because we're not cutting off whatever is above and as birders like to look up. Uh, so put your fingers out like this and start wiggling them. This is when you feel a little silly, but keep going. And then while staring ahead, you're gonna move your fingers out to the side, keep wiggling them until they're out of view, right? Once they're out of view, bring them slightly back in so you can see them. They're in your peripheral and you're still looking forward. At this point, now I'm telling you, I'm seeing birds that I didn't see two seconds ago because my entire field of view is open. You can put your hands down. And at this point, you're seeing the whole forest. You're not seeing individual trees. And so when you're tuned in at this point, you can actually hear more. And once you hear that woodpecker over there, then you can draw your eye to exactly where it is. And then if you have your binoculars, you can bring those binoculars up and take a closer look. But it, it takes opening that field of vision to get to that final place. Okay, so your bag is all packed. You have a great mental attitude. Your field of vision is totally open and you're ready to see all the wildlife or the trees in bloom that you want. However, you're walking through the woods and you're making a ruckus. So you're scaring everything away. So the next thing that I like to do is try to walk quietly. Okay, there's a few things to do this. The first and most important thing is to be aware of your surroundings, right? So you're not gonna wanna walk on the big crunchy leaves. Make sure you know what you're walking on. Uh, the second thing, just slow down. Um, if you're walking really fast, you're gonna make a lot of noise. The third way that you can decrease the amount of noise you're making in the woods is to walk in a straight line. If you ever watch cats move, they walk really quietly and it's because they're moving slowly. 
They know what they're stepping on and they walk pretty much in a straight line. Um, if you're a child and you're trying to be quiet, a lot of times you can walk on your tiptoes. But it's not really sustainable for your entire walk. So one tip that I suggest is to roll your feet. And this is a way that you can really be into your walk, your nature walk, as well as make minimal noise. So to do that, you're just gonna start at your heel and work on the outside of your foot and move to the front of your foot um, to make less noise than you would if you were just pounding the ground. late March, so some of the things that we see blooming every year have already started to pop up. A lot of the things that are giving us the color during our nature walks right now are those invasive species, some are non-native, some are just ornamental. They are beautiful though, so we should appreciate them. In a couple weeks, those native spring ephemerals will be popping up. That's what gets me really excited, but these guys keep me going until I can get those. So if we look down here, we'll see some of the purple Siberian squill, or they're kind of bluish as well. Um, these pop up early in the season. They're some of the first that you'll see. And take the time to appreciate them because these are really important right now for our honeybees that people have on their farms, for local pollinators uh, or native pollinators. So it's okay to appreciate them even though they might not be our native species. Okay, I was showing you the Siberian squill, but the best part about nature exploration are those teachable moments. And as I was down here, we saw this. This is an owl pellet. So you can actually see in here, I'll get my shadow off, there's a bone. So an owl ate something, maybe a vole or a mouse, and it regurgitated it. It regurgitated all the things that it couldn't digest. And we could actually, if we took the time to tear this apart, we could figure out what it ate. So really cool, there's owls here thriving at Lorimer. Thanks for joining me during this little bit of nature exploration. As you can see, the main thing you wanna do is get outside. The more you're outside, the more you can look at, the more you can discover, and the more changes you'll see as the time goes on and the years go on. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna journal all the things that I saw from the woodlands and the wetlands, uh, and then I'll see you guys next time. And I'm making sure to close that deer fence.